Hey everybody, welcome to another GoodyReader.com exclusive comparison video. My name is Michael. This is Peter. Today we're going to check out the Apple iPad 3 versus the Amazon Kindle Fire. It's basically the battle between Android and iOS. Out of both devices, they're both the top selling ones in their respective divisions. The Amazon Kindle Fire for about the last three or four months has been the top selling Android tablet and the iOS tablet, the you know, Apple iPad 3 just came out and already it's probably sold close to about a million copies on launch day. In this video uh, comparison we're going to check out video, we're going to check out comic books, web browsing experience and a whole lot more and we're going to show you how each of these two devices are very similar yet very distinctive in their ecosystem. Uh, first of all there's really no nothing we can really say about the iPad uh, that you haven't heard before. Apple's ecosystem is unparalleled in terms of the number of apps that they have and the Amazon App Store is very similar to the Apple Store in the respects that they both gatekeep app submissions very closely. Anytime you submit an app to the Amazon App Store or the Apple uh, Store, you actually have physical people checking them out. So the quality of apps is way better on both of these devices. Uh, the official Google Play market, which is the rebranded Android market, there's a dirge of really crappy apps out there. So without further ado, uh, let's just go over some of the specs so you can know what you can expect. A 7-inch tablet versus 9.7-inch, Android 2.3, iOS 5.1. They both have dual core processors that are 1 gigahertz. The Apple iPad 3 has 1 gig of RAM, whereas the Kindle Fire only has 512. We both have memory, internal memory on here. Uh, the Apple iPad has 16 gigs at the bare minimum, which is what we have here, versus uh, the Kindle Fire, which is we have 8 gigs here. Uh, both Wi-Fi, and you can see for yourself that they both kind of have this black bezel. This almost looks like a smaller version of this, doesn't <laughs> yeah, it? Yeah, it does. I would say so. All right, so uh, Pete, why don't you show us some of the hardware? Uh, yeah, um, very simple to kind of fire this one off. There's nothing on the right. There's n barely anything on the top except for two speakers. Nothing on the left, and 3.5 mil headphone jack as well as... A micro USB port and a power button on the bottom. So very simplistic design. Uh, rubber backing with embossed Kindle written in the back. It's basically all black, isn't it? It is. It is. It's very simple. And uh, there's nothing really new on the iPad 3 that there wasn't that there wasn't on the iPad 2 because they're actually utilizing the same housing. Aside from this being actually a little bit thicker than the iPad 2. Um, uh, Apple button on the front as well as a front-facing webcam. It's kind of hard to make out here with uh, the studio lighting and the black background. It is 0.3 megapixels, which is pretty woeful. Exactly. Uh, you have a Apple proprietary jack on the bottom, one speaker on the bottom left here, uh, 5 megapixel rear-facing camera, power button, of off and on um, choice switch of different things you can associate it to, um, up and down power, 3.5 mil headphone jack, and that's pretty much it. Up and down volume. Uh, in any case, uh, the one thing that we uh, neglected to say is the resolution. Uh, the Kindle Fire is 1024 by 600, whereas the Apple iPad 3 is 2048 by 1536. So the resolution is absolutely crazy with this. Unfortunately, there really isn't any native apps or games built from the ground up using these high resolution. So uh, for the, all the people that are thinking, wow, Apple iPad 3, crazy resolution. Well, the content has really caught up with it yet. Maybe in a few months, maybe like six months, we should start seeing enhanced ebooks and things like that, or even comic books, uh, graphic novels, and uh, things like that. Even like customized map I mean think about like satellite imagery um, you know think of Google Maps with like double the resolution uh, that would look amazing but none of this is really caught up yet uh, the first thing we're gonna do is do a video comparison on how video looks on each device uh, we're gonna check out uh, the same trailer here I believe it's Hugo
you can see all the titles you have here for uh, viewing. Yeah, I would say that the selection between both of them is not too bad. I mean, uh, I do dig the Amazon ecosystem, and uh, I I think that videos tend to buffer and load a little bit quicker. Um, I know when we loaded up Hugo on here, it actually took about like a boat almost two minutes for the entire two minute clip to load whereas with amazon because they have like their own crazy amazon cloud uh, system they have amazon s3 they basically have this huge network infrastructure for like um their web browser which basically caches your po most popular websites in advance and so Amazon handles a lot of like the buffering and, and, and loading and so there really isn't a lot of uh, stress on your own local connection so I would say in comparison to just buffering videos Kindle Fire wins just because of their crazy infrastructure but let's just check out how videos look uh, side to side and you can gauge, gauge the quality so count three one two three It's obviously a much smaller device. It's very hard to uh, convey side by side, especially on a um, well widescreen when there's a seven inch versus a nine point seven inch. In terms of like how it looks, what are your initial impressions on like the quality? I mean, is it a screen size aside, I mean it's both playing the same thing. I mean, are you noticing higher resolution with this video? from iTunes that's in HD versus the Kindle Fire? Well, actually, one thing that I first noticed is that they look exactly the same. And this is actually an advantage for the iPad because this is usually on smaller screens. It looks like the quality's higher because it's, not, it, it's more compressed. It doesn't have to display as many pixels. But whereas the iPad is, is displaying something exactly like this on a far bigger screen, and it doesn't look... Um, enlarged or or blurred out because you've enlarged the image so much that it just gets blurry this is actually this is actually has a, amazing resolution is making up for it being able to run on a big screen it's, and another thing i notice is that the colors are both as vibrant i was expecting the apple to be like wow look at those blues look at those reds like blu-ray like, quality exactly but honestly i'm not seeing too much of a difference i think the amazon kindle is uh is definitely up there in terms of picture quality. And I think that that's probably another reason why it's the number one selling Android tablet right now is that uh, it does have a lot of things going for it. Uh, but it's just unfortunate that with the Kindle Fire uh, living in Canada, you can't actually buy it here unless you buy it through, uh, say, like our retail sponsor, ShopeeReaders.com. Whereas with the Apple iPad, you could pretty well, most countries in the world, just walk to an Apple store and purchase them. Even in China, you know, you can walk to a local store. You definitely can get this outside the US unless you buy it online so we checked out videos uh, let's just check out you know basically uh, a little bit of an ecosystem here this is the main menu interface with uh, the Apple iPad and this is your main menu interface with uh, the Amazon Kittle so uh, common programs open I'd say that this is probably like a little bit more intuitive although if this if this iOS were Android, you would say, oh, it's a pretty vanilla experience, right? Like, it just icons, there really isn't any live tiles or anything like that. So, um, they're both with, with, despite the fact that the Amazon Kindle Fire is running Android 2.3, I'd say that they've done their own custom uh, graphical user interface and UI very well. I think that if you compare the two, they're distinctive. But I would say that they're they, they're both intuitive in their own ways. There really isn't a lot of sub menus or a lot of complicated features. I mean, everything that you'd want is just right here. So the next thing that we're gonna do is look at the comic book experience. So we have uh, both the Marvel app that we loaded here. Load up a little bit of X-Men versus the Avengers. So uh, while that's downloading, I mean, the one thing that 
the Amazon Kindle Fire has going for it is the ability to be able to download apps from other sources. Uh, the unfortunate thing with uh, the Apple iPad is you're pretty well locked into iTunes and uh, the app store whereas with the kindle fire it gives you a little bit more flexibility in where you download your apps from you do have the amazon app store that's bundled with the device but it doesn't lock you into it you could of course download a lot of android apps from our own goody reader app market which is a goodyreader.com apps so if you're looking for say uh, the kobo reader the nook reader and uh, tons of other content you can easily uh load that onto your Kindle Fire and a lot of those programs just aren't available in the Amazon App Store so it does give you a little bit more flexibility to load in your own apps. Okay so now that the comic has uh, been downloaded we're just going to simply open it up and uh, more or less just get to the same page here. Okay so right away I mean like looking at it by default it's almost like the same size. It's a little bit bigger here but I mean, once you start pinching and zooming, you're good. Um, the, I would say comics probably a look a little bit better when you're in landscape mode on uh, the Kindle Fire, just because of the screen real estate. But you can see like the quality here. They almost look exactly the same. <clears throat> Just a touch better on the Apple. Yeah, I mean, this comic, I think both of these comics were not designed for super high resolution. I mean, in effect that, you know, they're glorified PDF files, you know. This, they look the same from device to device. But, I mean, uh, the comic book reading experience really isn't like a, a huge, doesn't really, there's not a huge difference. I, of course, like to read comics on larger screens because, you know, if you have a comic book uh, in your hand, it's about the size of this. Whereas a comic book is n in real life is not the size of this. So um, it takes a little bit getting used to. On the flip side, this is extremely portable, whereas like this isn't so portable. This does not fit in your pocket. This fits in my jeans back pocket, dress pants. It fits even in like the side of like my blazer, you know, whereas like this... Uh, I would have to make like some customized like holder. I would walk end up walking around like a Batman utility belt freak, you know. Imagine that like this with like the Apple iPad charger, your iPhone is like, yeah, you know, check me out. So this is basically um how comic books look. And the experience is pretty well the same. The only thing different is like the 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 screen size, but I mean pinching and zooming, uh things, you know, it's not like a huge thing. happens pretty quickly same with this there really isn't any noticeable delay um, let's check out the ebook experience we're both gonna load up uh, the Kindle app and you may say well this looks eerily familiar yeah it totally does I mean this is an update to the Amazon Kindle Fire app for iOS, and they made it with the intention of looking very much the same as uh, the Amazon Kindle Fire native app. So you see they're a little bit different. Cloud and devices at the top here, where it's at the bottom here. So you could see uh, devices uh, purchases that you've made, but ne ne necessarily haven't synced them to your device yet. So let's just check out how a book looks. Yeah, that was super quick. Okay, so we're on the same page here. And you can see for yourself on how uh, things are a little bit different here. Uh, what are your impressions? Uh, just uh, how it looks right here. Um, looking at right now, the backs of the screen, the, the white portion, um, I don't see any noticeable difference. Like neither of them are more blue or more red or more orangey than the others. So, uh, yeah, I would say that they're pretty close to being the exact same. I don't see any um, pixelation in either of the letters themselves. They they look pretty much similar. This one just displays more text, obviously, because it's a bigger screen. And uh, it being the Kindle app, a lot of them have like the same type of uh, formatting options. I honestly like that the way that Amazon has done this interface on uh, the Kindle Fire. If you look at here, I mean, this doesn't really tell you too much. 
look at uh, even like the size letters whereas like here it gives you so many more options to increase like the size of like uh, you know the fonts and it's all instant in real time this is instant in real time too but the Kindle Fire actually gives you more options to increase the font size than you know you can see right here so uh, of course with the Kindle Fire you can actually do line spacing margins and things like that you can actually do like a lot of that with uh, the Apple iPad So they both have the ability to, uh, you know, if I have both of these devices and I, you know, get to like page 30, this will automatically sync to page 30 next time I open it. So that's the kind of the cool thing about cross-platform Amazon. So uh, the ebook experience, pretty well the same. I would say that I do like the Amazon Kindle Fire in terms of more features that it gives with the exact same app. Yeah, I would say so as well. I really like um, even when even back in the e-ink e-reader days. Uh, I mean, the Amazon has always been the best for just, I believe, reading and just formatting the text to your personal preferences. Yeah, totally. So the last thing that we want to do is check out uh, the internet experience. We'll visit. I was already on my favorite site. Sorry. Ha. <laughs> And I hope it's uh, your favorite sites as well. Okay, so uh, here's the blog right here. And this is our, of course, our number one priority in our lives. You can get all the latest tablet, e reader, digital publishing, and ebook news. And zoom in on the iPad 3 is pretty snappy. You can see that it did load up pretty quickly in comparison. I think something's actually wrong here. It's not going to anything. Well, it says loading. Do you have even Wi Fi working on this? Yeah, it is. Just let it load so that, you know, touch the devices or whatever. There you go. Now hold on. Alright, so we've all loaded up here, and uh, we're just going to try some pinching and zooming on both of these together. Obviously, the uh, Apple iPad is much more fluid at pinching and zooming. You do see there's a little bit of delay when you do it on the um, Kindle Fire. But, uh, yeah, let's try going in on this image. Pretty much the same there. Yeah. She looks like she's happy about walking into an Apple iStore, giving everybody high fives. I just got my Kindle. I just got my iPad 3. Yahoo! I mean, I was pretty happy when I got this today, too, I must say, so. A web browsing experience is pretty similar. Uh, of course, smaller screen, and that's pretty well has been, like, the crux of this, is that the Amazon Kindle Fire is, it keeps up with the Apple iPad 3 in head-to-head -head tests. Uh, the only drawback is a smaller screen, but it makes up for it with uh, being way more portable and uh, way more pocket-friendly and uh, two entirely different ecosystems, Android and iOS. I do dig the flexibility of Android versus, uh, say, iOS. I like loading in my own apps. I like being able to connect the Kindle Fire up to my PC and load in comic books I download from the Internet. I like being able to, um, you know, uh, have more control over what apps I install, uh, PDF files I install. I, I, I don't like iTunes very much, but I really do like... Uh, the Apple iPad line of tablets. I think that they do a really good job. I think the iPad 3 is probably the best device that they've ever made. Again, the content has to catch up, but in the end, what are your thoughts? Um, yeah, the, uh, as you said, I mean, they're they're pretty much on par in terms of um, the content that's available right now. I believe that this obviously has a lot more potential to go further, but because this is launch day, um, there's really no there's nothing out there for it to really show its true colors but as it stands right now yeah I mean they're both the leading devices in what they do uh, this I believe starts at five hundred dollars and goes up this is 
two hundred dollars so the price alone you know it's less than half but um it's hard it's hard to say i mean w once again we're not seeing which one's better because these are both the best of what they do so um yeah, we're just if you're thinking about getting either of these two devices, the reason we put them head to head and they run the same tests with the same type of content is just to give you an indication on uh, how the performance goes from platform to platform, from device to device. So we'll let you make the ultimate call on what you think is better. We'd love to hear your thoughts, so please reply to this video on our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash user slash goody reader. And for all the news, check out our blog at goodyreader.com slash blog. And uh, for Goody Reader, my name is Michael. This is Peter. Everybody take care.